going to show you how to clean up sloppy string noise from your guitar playing. And I'm going to show you how to do that without using things like a hairband on the fretboard or a noise gate or any type of things like that, even if you're using high output pickups or a lot of distortion as part of your guitar sound. Now, I'm not saying that anybody who does use a hairband is a bad player or has bad technique or anything like that. In fact, if I was recording in a studio paying $500 an hour, I would probably also want to have a hairband on my guitar just to be absolutely sure my playing is totally clean. But when you're just playing for yourself or maybe you're playing a gig or something, it's important to just rely on your hands and nothing else to get rid of as much string noise as possible. So let's talk about how to make that happen. Muting string noise in your playing comes down to just three things. First, you got to make string noise as easy to hear as possible. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. Next, you got to get clear on what type of string noise you're hearing, because depending on what type of noise you're dealing with, there's different ways to make it go away. And then you got to use the right string muting technique to get rid of the noise and make your playing clean again. Let's talk about how to do each step in detail. To make string noise easy to hear, the best thing you can do is to practice with distortion. The more distortion, the better most of the time. And I swear, if I hear one more person say that distortion covers up mistakes... What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Distortion not only doesn't cover up all mistakes, but when it comes to string noise, it makes it a lot louder and easier to hear and therefore easier to fix. Now, distortion does mask weak or inconsistent articulation a little bit, but that's a topic for a different video entirely. I'm just saying it's completely stupid to make a single blanket statement like distortion masks mistakes or covers up mistakes because that is just not true at all. Let me prove it to you. Watch. I'm going to turn the volume on my guitar and you're going to hear a lot of noise right away. That's because I'm using maximum distortion on my amp and I'm using very high output pickups and my hands are not going to be anywhere near the strings. Check this out. You're hearing noise right away and as I'm shaking the guitar, the noise only gets louder all thanks to distortion. One thing that does mask mistakes though is excessive use of effects. If you practice lead guitar with a lot of delay, reverb or chorus, turn that sh Use just distortion, nothing else. It's going to make it a lot easier to hear your mistakes, easier to spot string noise when it happens, and also easier to sync up your hands when you practice. Of course, when you play, use all the effects you want, but when you're practicing, stick to using distortion only. Okay, back on topic. Let's talk about the three types of string noise you're going to deal with when you play guitar. The first type of string noise you'll deal with is the noise from the lower strings. And by the way, guitar players, please learn that lower means lower in pitch, not as in closer to the floor. We're talking about music here. We're talking about pitches, so when we say lower, it means lower in pitch. The thicker strings, the wound strings, that's what we're talking about. So, lower strings are going to ring out when you got nothing muting them. So, for example, if I'm going to play a two-string pentatonic cell on the higher strings, again, which means higher in pitch, the thinner strings, and I'm not going to do anything to mute the lower strings, the moment I turn the volume knob on, you're going to hear a lot of noise. Check this out. <laughs> All this wonderful noise is happening because I'm not muting the lower strings at all. The higher strings, or the thinner ones, are going to ring out if I don't have anything muting them while I'm playing the lower strings, or the thicker ones. So watch this. If I'm going to play a scale, I'm going to fret the notes on the sixth string, but I got nothing muting the higher strings, nothing muting them. The moment I turn the volume on, the noise you're hearing is coming from the higher strings. And the third type of noise is going to happen when you forget to release the finger that just finished playing a note as the next finger frets its next note. This creates a problem known as bleeding. And it sounds wonderful when you play it in arpeggios with distortion at high speeds. Ah, everybody loves that sound, don't they? No, nobody loves that sound. So you got to know how to get rid of bleeding. I'm going to show you how a little bit later on in this video. All right, so let's talk about how to actually mute string noise. My main go-to way of muting lower strings, and again, I'm talking about pitches here, not about direction of floor to ceiling, is using the heel of my palm right here, the front of my palm. Basically, everything from around this spot to here, all the way up to like this part of the thumb, all of that is covering the lower in pitch strings and it simply slides up or slides down when I'm playing scales, arpeggios, or whatever licks. Looks something like this. The reason you didn't hear anything except for the notes I wanted you to hear is in large part thanks to muting with the heel of the palm. And this is a very easy way to mute because it's such a large surface area 
and it makes it almost impossible to mess it up because so much of your flesh is touching the strings at any given time. Now it's important to not confuse what I just showed you and muting with the side of the palm like this, which is what you would typically do when you're strumming power chords and playing rhythm guitar. This is for muting the notes that you actually are trying to play. This is for muting the strings you don't want to hear. So again, for rhythm guitar, I simply rest the side of my wrist on the strings to create the palm muted effect. For lead guitar, I'm resting the palm on the strings I'm not playing so that the notes I am playing ring out to their full volume, like this. That's why you don't hear palm muting when I play scales or licks. And I use the heel of the palm technique for everything. Doesn't matter if I'm playing scales or arpeggios or whatever licks, even when I'm doing things like sweep tapping and I have to switch between picking over here and going over here to do the tapping, the heel of the palm is always covering the lower strings. Looks like this. So I switched back and forth between sweep picking to going over here to then back again over here and the heel of the palm kept my playing clean throughout. Now one question people ask me sometimes about using the heel of my palm is what do I do when I'm on the sixth string and I don't want to mute the sixth string, where do I position my palm in that case? And the answer is very simple. I just pretend that I have a seven string guitar and my palm is resting on an imaginary seven string because it's exactly in the spot where it would be if I did have a low B string back here. And so when I play the three notes on the low E string, they're not muted, but then when I move to the A string, now the bottom of my heel of my palm right here is now it's resting on the sixth string, covering it up, and now I'm able to freely move through the other strings. Now let's talk about muting the higher in pitch strings. The main way I do it is by using the index finger of my fretting hand. What it does is it rests on the strings that are higher in pitch than the one I want to play and it keeps them covered. So as you can see, I'm fretting the C note on the sixth string of the guitar, about to play the C major scale, and the index finger is covering in a little arc strings A to the high E. So earlier, when I showed you that if I turn the volume on on my guitar, you hear noise. That's because nothing is muting the strings in this moment. But when I get into this index finger muting position and I turn the volume on, you're not gonna hear really anything except for maybe slight undertones of the C note that I'm fretting and that I want you to hear. You just hear this. You don't really hear the other strings unless I hit them hard with the pick because they're muted by the index finger. And that's why when I'm playing a scale up and down, my playing is consistently clean in both directions. And that's why when I finished playing the scale, I could remove my picking hand from the strings because one, there are no more strings that are lower in pitch than the one I finished playing. And second, my index finger is covering all the strings except for the one that I'm actually sustaining right now. The other way that I sometimes mute the higher strings is by using the middle finger or the ring finger of my picking hand to rest on either the high E string, the B string, or the G string, or some combination. And I use this when I'm descending sweet picking arpeggios like this. <laughs> to make sure that the higher strings are always clean. And I also use this when I'm holding out a note with heavy vibrato and I wanna make sure that the other strings around it are muted. Notice how the fingers of my picking hand are again covering the higher strings like so. However, when I'm playing scales or scale sequences, I generally don't use fingers two and three of the picking hand for muting. The reason is I like to have them somewhat flush with the index finger when I pick fast because I find that makes my hand a little bit more aerodynamic for faster playing, like this. So that's why I don't mute with these two fingers in that case. Now let's talk about what to do if your notes bleed together when you play. Now there's no real technique or magic trick for this, like muting with the heel of the palm, for example. It just comes down to careful listening and some attention to detail. So if you're playing a scale and the notes are bleeding together like this, the first thing you wanna do is slow down enough until you're confident that there's no bleeding happening anymore. You wanna give yourself that confidence that, hey, at least if I go slowly enough, the bleeding issue disappears. And then you want to speed the tempo up again and find the exact threshold where if you go any faster, the bleeding issue comes back and becomes uncontrollable. If you go any slower, it disappears. That is the magic tempo. That is the threshold where you need to practice and train yourself to make your playing bleed free. 
Of course, there are many ways this problem can happen. It can happen in a simple scale. It can happen in an inside picking lick. Where the notes can ring together if you're not careful. It can happen during string skipping or during arpeggios. It doesn't really matter. The process I just described with just some attention to detail and careful listening is all you need to fix it. The next step after you know what techniques to use to mute string noise is to audit your technique as you play and practice. An Audi! I'm getting a car! Uh, Peter, there's a T in there that, that says audit. No, Brian, it's a foreign car. The T is silent. What you do is you start playing a lick, and the moment you hear any noise, you stop, you look at the picking hand, look at the fretting hand, and inspect which hand isn't doing its job and which strings aren't being muted like they're supposed to. One trick you can also do is when you stop on a note in the middle of a lick, you take any of the fingers that are not being used to fret notes, like say, for example, the middle finger is free right now, and you just do this. Just touch the strings and, and try to make the strings vibrate and create noise. And if the heel of the palm isn't muting correctly or the index finger isn't muting the highest strings, you'll definitely hear which strings are not muted. And then you can take action to correct it. So it's really a pretty simple and straightforward process once you understand the details and you follow them like I described. If you want to build guitar speed but you hate practicing slowly, hit the link in the description of this video or go to the page that's on the screen right now. I'm going to show you a new way to build guitar speed that I call guitar speed formula. It's a way to practice guitar without having to slow way down and build speed by gradually increasing the metronome a few beats per minute at a time because, let's face it, that's a pretty boring way to practice and, more importantly, doesn't work anywhere near as well as people tell you that it does. If you want to know a new way to practice, enter your email address. I'll send it right over to you for free. If you like this video, hit the like button to let YouTube know that you enjoyed this video and then YouTube will show this video to other guitar players like you so they'll benefit from it the same way you did. This is Mike Filipov, guitar practice expert from practiceguitarnow.com. I'll see you next time.